brothers and sisters, those who define themselves by beer commercials and who like to think of themselves as living in a nice, happy, wonderful, upstanding nation, a cuddly, kind socialist utopia that everyone can live happily in. I'm here today to burst that particular bubble in case you are living in it and to let you know that no... Canada is not a happy place. In fact, it is a two-bit tyranny. And I don't use those words lightly. And this is not a rant against Harper or Trudeau or any of the other political puppets that are dangled in front of our face to garner our applause or face our approbation. This is a condemnation of the whole entire system. And let's take a look at some aspects of that specifically. For example, earlier this year, this story caught my eye. Insulting police online banned by Granby, Quebec bylaw. That's right. If you happen to live in Granby and happen to complain about the police and the way you were treated by them or to in any other way insult them in a way that uh, any particular police officer or really any government official feels to be insulted by your comments online, they can now launch a prosecution against you. And this uh, in involves fines ranging from 100 to as much as $1,000. And this isn't for some sort of death threat against police officers or anything of that sort. This is really criticism of police. Uh, the move comes after town officials discovered a Facebook page called Les Policiers Zélés de Granby, the Zealous Police of Granby. Ooh, that sounds like a really threatening political document, doesn't it? But apparently that's enough to earn such ire of the uh, the police force that you can now actually be prosecuted for it under this bylaw. But that's just unfortunately one tiny, tiny example of the type of craziness, craziness, and I use that word advisedly, that is taking place and has taken place in Canada over the decades, the corruption and uh, ultimately the destruction of any semblance of right to free speech in the country of Canada. The latest example comes from Ezra Levant, who I'm sure the Canadians in the crowd will recognize as a rather smarmy, uh, typical uh, small C, or big C, so I should say, conservative uh, of the war on terror promoting 9-11 official fairy tale believing blah 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 type who uh, is a smarmy person in a lot of ways but having said that he certainly does deserve the right like any other journalist to say whatever he has to say on these various issues and people can regard him or disregard him as they so choose but no apparently not now for having called the Alberta Human Rights Commission crazy he is now being prosecuted by the Law Society of Alberta they there has been a complaint uh, lodged against him because he is actually a member of that law society. He's not a practicing lawyer. He was uh, writing in his function as a journalist for Sun Media when he said the Alberta Human Rights Commission was crazy. But they are now prosecuting him uh, with one charge of being publicly discourteous or disrespectful to a commissioner or tribunal chair of the Alberta Human Rights Commission and two charges that his public comments regarding the Alberta Human Rights Commission were inappropriate and unbecoming and that such conduct is deserving of sanction. Indeed. So this is the price that lawyers apparently will uh, pay if they happen to be also journalists and try to speak out against such things as the crazy Alberta Human Rights Commission, which is crazy. I mean, if you look at it as an institution, it was founded in the, by the Alberta Human Rights Act and is basically just one of these uh, provincial uh, uh, human rights tribunals, commissions that exist in all of the various provinces. And of course, all of them under the, the federal, the, the Canadian Human Rights Commission, which is under the C Canadian Human Rights Act, which has been amended over the years. But uh, there was a particularly controversial section, Section 13.1 which did read, it is a discriminatory practice for a person or a group of persons acting in concert to communicate telephonically or to cause to be so communicated repeatedly in whole or in part by means of the facilities of a telecommunication undertaken within the legislative authority of parliament to any matter that is likely to expose a person or persons to hatred or contempt by reason of the fact that person... Uh, that person or those persons are identifiable on the basis of a prohibited ground of discrimination, i.e., 
a hate speech law. That is, there are certain words that are so harmful that if you utter them, you can and will be prosecuted by one of these human rights commissions. Or at least that was the case up until 2013, at which point this 13.1 was, I believe, repealed from the uh, the human uh, the Canadian Human Rights Act altogether. That does not mean there is not still human rights uh, uh, criminal co- in the criminal code, but at any rate, this Human Rights Act it does no longer. Uh, include that 13.1 because there were so uh, there were a number of very high profile cases that were very ridiculous uh, of people bringing charges against even news media for daring to report on various things. And yes, it may have been McLean's magazine reporting on the war on terror and all of that being uh, subject to a claim by a can- the Canadian Islamic Council or something of that nature, uh, claiming that uh, this was a violation of uh, the 13.1 because it constituted hate speech against Muslims. Well, again, of course, the fairy tale of the war on terror is something that should be disputed wholeheartedly, but not through the courts and not in that manner. Freedom of speech is something that well, it's uh, one of the ideals that's enshrined in the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Look at all the beautiful rights and freedoms enshrined here. Freedom of conscience and religion, freedom of thought, belief, opinion, and expression, including freedom of the press and other media of communication, freedom of peaceful assembly, freedom of association. All of these wonderful, nice, fuzzy, wuzzy, wonderful uh, freedoms that are granted by the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, except... You might have noticed there's an interesting little clause here. The United Nations Charter of Rights and Freedoms puts it at the end. The Canadian Charter puts it right at the beginning. It's interesting. The Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms guarantees the rights and freedoms set out in it subject only to such reasonable limits prescribed by laws can be demonstrably justified in a free and democratic society, i.e. the government can repeal whatever of these wonderful rights and freedoms they want to at any time through legislation by simply declaring it to be reasonable, and of course the courts going along with it, and that has and does continue to happen. That's how there can be such thing as hate speech laws in the criminal code, despite the fact that you are guaranteed freedom of thought, belief, opinion, and expression. Well, no, no, you are not actually guaranteed those things, as it was demonstrated quite amply during the G20 protests in Toronto, where they simply declared, well, you don't have Canadian charter rights uh, in this particular location because this isn't Canada anymore. This is in Canada right now? Wow. Yes, that was just one of the examples of such abrogation of supposedly guaranteed rights and freedoms that took place during the Toronto G20, and there are numerous other examples besides. No, Canada is not the warm, fluffy, wonderful government-swaddled utopia that Canadians seem to like to believe it is. So there's a lot more to say on this topic. I'm going to be writing about it for The Forecaster this weekend, talking with reference, of course, to Bill C-51, the latest terroristic legislation from the real terrorists in Canadian Parliament to come down the line. But we'll leave it there for now. Once again, I am Canadian, so I'm allowed to say these things.